3. Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to Press Extension 101. My name is Chris Robbins and today I am with... Nick Ashler. And today we're going to be watching some Darius Geis. Uh, he is a third year junior from LSU who plays running back. Uh, he's listed at 5'11", 215, so pretty good size, I would say. Uh, thoughts on that, just before we get any, anything further? Yeah, I'm a fan of Darius Geis' size. 5'11 is a pretty good running back size. And generally for a running back to be above 200, 200 pounds flat is really nice to see, so I'm a fan of his size. Nice. Uh, so, a little bit about his character here, for those of you guys who want to pause and read through the whole thing, uh, go right ahead. Uh, but, point being, uh, he grew up a little bit rough uh, throughout his life, he's had issues. Uh, obese as a child, pushed to play offensive line, arrested for shoplifting, uh, father was murdered in a restaurant, uh, his brother committed second degree murder. Uh, so, he's definitely had his fair share of struggles. Uh, to go through. Uh, so, uh, what type of impact do you think his character uh, might have in his background as a whole uh, could impact his stock and possibly his career down the road? Honestly, I don't. I honestly don't think it'll have a huge impact on him. Keep in mind, he did this in when he was 14. He's now probably about 20 to 21. Um, that's a long time to mature and grow up. Um, the stuff that happened to his father and his brother, that wasn't his doing. That was his father and his brother doing it. So um, I think he did experience a lot of personal hardships, but not unlike Deshaun Watson, who kind of experienced the same personal hardship growing up in co poverty and stuff. I feel like he may be able to rise up over that and be a big player because of the motivation to it. Fantastic. And yeah, we see that a lot, like especially a lot of these guys. Like If he has pretty great interviews and he can impress some teams, then... And kind of like go through his, his maturity and all that, like through interviews and everything. I'm sure we'll see some of that uh, yeah. shadowed. Uh, so, uh, as you guys can see here, there is a lot of tape. Uh, in fact, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's 11 of its 13 games uh, this year. So,. Of course, we're not going to be watching all 11 of those, but definitely if you guys have free time on your own, feel free to go back. Uh, we have the Auburn game up first, uh, going in order from earliest to latest here. Uh, so, yeah, whenever you're ready, uh, Nick. Yep, I'm ready. Get this started. Alright, pushing play. Cool. Weird little offensive line switch there. Single back, which is interesting. He's now like a, uh, an Oregon type of runner. They do have him running out of single back, or at least start up in single back first. You see he's going to get into a passing route. Um, it's pretty good. I like that. Same thing with the second play here. Another single back look. First run. Hmm. Can we go back and look at that? Um, I just want to see what holes and options he had available in terms of vision. Okay. Mm. Okay, not bad vision. He saw the, he read the linebacker, I think, in front of him and was able to not kind of lean off that way, even though he could take the hole to the farthest to his right and to, towards the bottom of the screen. Um, still wasn't a bad run. So where are you at on your tape? Uh, I'm, on, I'm at the end of the fourth play, 47. All right, I'm at 50 seconds, but I'm actually going to turn mine down. I have a pause right now. I'm going to turn mine down to 0.75 so we can see things okay. a little bit slower. So I'll when you get to 50 same. seconds, let me know. Okay. I'm at 52, so I'll go back a little bit. Okay, um, I liked it 50 seconds where he was able to break that first tackle, that little arm tackle that's uh, pretty good strength and just shows how good his lower half is. Mm -hmm. Cool, so I'm at .75 speed at 57 now. 
Okay, I'll get that 57 right now. Okay. I like that little cutback right there. Gonna be able to push that pile. Kind of blown up at one twelve. Yeah. Yeah, one twelve. He did get blown up right there. Again, passing route when he could have blocked right there. I think um, maybe not the intention of the play, but if. I'm a running back and I see a defensive end screaming off the edge like that. I'm going to want to be able to block him. Um, obviously, he was going the other way, but that's just something to take in mind. you got to keep that head on a swivel when you're blocking. Yep. Or when you're in the backfield in general. Uh, interesting. Is that first down? Yeah, I'm at uh, 142. One three two. Okay, I'm a one three one. So we're basically on oh, the same nice. page. Okay. <laughs> He's gonna get blown up on this one. That's a little weird. I wait for you then, cause I'm at one forty seven. I thought. One forty. Yeah, one forty seven. Okay. So just let me know when you get there. Yeah, I'm right here. Oh, okay. No, one fifty one. Oh gosh. Okay. Especially a little bit better if you're a little bit ahead of me. Yeah. So. He doesn't push the pile very well, that's what I notice. Yeah, I just saw the jump play there on that last one. Hey, one second, I'm gonna take a break. No, no, no. What are you doing? Good. I'm gonna try this. Super creamy. Yes. Try another bag. Take a coconut. No coconut. Yep. Yeah. You like it? It's the last fish here. Good job. Run heavy right. Yeah, that's exactly what he's doing. And so I have this hole again there. But it doesn't seem to have too much issue with that. It's just kind of nice to see when back to vision, probably priority shirt number one for me. Sorry about that, Chris. I was off for a second. Yeah, you did. Where are we at now? Uh, I am at 245. 245 will go up there. Okay. So, no, I'm at like 250. Yeah, I'm at 248, so I'll move up ahead a little bit. Now, that was really good, that tackle that he kind of broke just using his legs. Yep, very well done. <clears throat> mm, got pushed out of bounds there. Yep. I do like, though, how he does seem to be a downhill runner first. Unlike yeah. With, unlike with Saquon, who's running horizontal a lot, he does seem to be running vertical. Mm -hmm. He seems to be going a lot through the two, four, and six holes instead of uh, to the outside and trying to get to the outside from, or trying to get upfield to the outside, which is also pretty good. Yep. Okay, that was kind of weird pass blocking. Yeah. What kind of formation is this? Where are you at? Just line I'm up a at tight end. Yeah, I think he went, lined up a halfback, to be honest. At 342. Oh, I would just say like 348. Oh, it's probably the same. Yeah, it's the same thing, I think. Yeah, it was a little bit weird of a formation. Single back. A single back, but they had him lined up at, like, the inline guy. Yeah, I saw the, like, halfback tight end style was a little bit weird. He got a good amount of yardage out of it, but... Mm -hmm. Just have going forward there. Mm 
Hands <clears> catch her <throat> out of the backfield. Nice to see. Oh, didn't even get brought down. Shut up at the line of scrimmage, that's not very good. I do like the next play though, uh, at 441, 442-ish, she seems to be doing a nice show getting over there. Yeah, he did a good job of being able to just keep moving, getting those extra yards. Twice in a row there. It's gonna get stopped. Interesting. Uh, so, uh, how much Darius guys say before that had you watched? I watched the Florida game, and I watched a lot of his 2016 game, but that was it. So, or 2016 tape. Yeah. Uh, so, based on what you've seen so far, uh, how would you view him? You know. Again, I'm a fan of his power running style, and it's it's a kind of subtle power running style. It's not Nick Chubb power running style, but it's still really good power running. He's going to be able to use his um, the lower half to be able to break all those tackles and be able to keep moving. I like that he keeps moving his feet, um, and when he's getting tackled and all that, that's really nice. Um, uh, it looks like a lot of times at the line of scrimmage, his patience, he doesn't – like Le'Veon Bell is that type of running back that you know he'll be patient he'll find the hole. Guys, tr I feel like tries to be that, but he isn't that. Because I, I saw him a lot. I saw Geis a lot in that Auburn game. Just kind of waited the line of scrimmage, shift around, waiting for that hold open. But a lot of times he waited too long, which um, may be a little bit of concern if he's going to keep doing that on the NFL level. Yep. And that's kind of one of the things that I like about uh, Ronald Jones and Sonny Michelle. Uh, is that they seem yeah. a little bit more explosive through that hole. Uh, and that's one of the things mm -hmm. that I, I don't like about Saquon. Is that he takes, like guys, he seems to take a while to, to find that link. And especially yeah. if you're going to a scheme, or a blocking, uh, a, a core blocking team rather, uh, where you have to kind of find that first hole and you shoot through it. I'm not yep. kind of sure how that's, that's going to work. Because uh, not everyone has David DiCastro, Marcus Gilbert, etc. on their line. Yeah. And But one thing I do like that we already mentioned here uh, for a second, but I do like that he's a lot downhill. He's no, that north-south running back. He's not like Saquon who just kind of moves to the side. He goes through the two-hole, the four-hole, and the six-hole quite consistently and is able to move up, to, up down uphill, excuse me, instead of going to the side and trying to find the, the way to get upfield. So, just something to keep in mind with that. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think about uh, his ability in, in different schemes? Do you think that he has to go to a man's scheme? Do you think he has to go to his own scheme? Preference, at least? I don't really know. I'm not that familiar with many schemes, but... um. Yeah, so I can't really talk about, I can't really speak on that because so, I sound like an idiot. <laughs> okay, so just general background here. A zone scheme is generally like pulled guys where they take out like a guy that's rushing from a certain area. Whereas mm -hmm. a man's scheme is obviously like what you expect, like you block this guy, you block this guy. Yeah. Type of thing. So like the center takes the nose, the left guard takes the, the, uh, like three tacks type. Uh, the yeah. tackles take like the, the defensive ends. Agreed. Okay, um, now, now I'm a little bit more familiar with it. I think, honestly, Geis, it's kind of hard to tell because you'd think in a man's game, he'd probably have a linebacker blitzing, but if that linebacker drops into coverage, it may look like he's sitting in that, that whole area at zone. So that I think part of it may be zone. I think he may be a little bit more comfortable in zone because in the Auburn tape, we saw there was, I remember the seeing this big open gap and him just sitting in and making sure nobody got through it. So um, I think he may be a little bit more comfortable in his zone blocking scheme. Nice. Uh, 
Uh, all right, Igor. So, uh, is there anything else that you'd like to say on the Auburn tape? Just general thoughts from what you saw, or are you ready to move on to Bama? I'm ready for Bama. Awesome. Uh, so let me know when you're there. Uh, I also have a, this one on point seven five two. Okay, um, I'll turn it. I'll turn it down then, and we'll get into it. Awesome. Let me know when you play. I right, am ready. Cool. And here we go. Mmm. Okay, it's gonna get a little bit of push. Yeah, next shot leans around pain too. Bigger guy, obviously nose tackle for stone talent there. Yep. Okay, it wasn't a bad block. Yeah, kind of. I'd like to go back and oh, take yeah. a look at. Yeah. Okay, so it looked a little bit like a zone blocking scene because that tight end kind of lost it, and it was his responsibility to pick it up as that defensive end came into his zone. So I think my theory of him being in the zone blocking scheme more comfortable would be supported by that play. Do you, don't you agree, Chris? Yeah, I would say so. But I mean, it's different yeah. like when you're pass blocking than when you're running. Yeah. Hands catch there. Yeah. Wow, do you see him just, like, staying grounded against 33 right there? Mm -hmm. That was crazy. I believe that's that guy's uh, Harrison, actually. I yeah. You are on that, though. It's a big fella. Either way. One thing I do tend to notice is that um, the LSU quarterback, you can't pronounce his last name, but I know his first name's Danny, doesn't seem to pass to Geis a lot. I mean, we've only really seen two targets of Geis in these first two games that we've watched so far. Nice. There's three, but... Yeah. But yeah, he's caught all of them. Yeah, he, right. yeah he, he's consistent in catching all of them. And that's one of the knocks we had on Fournette last year, is that he never was very that active in the passing game. There's that same weird play again, where he lines up to, like, in line. Yeah. He's still got a nice, decent, like, th what was it, three-yard pickup, you think? Around. Seven-yard. Yeah, it was about a six-yard pickup. That's pretty good. One thing I do like here is that he's in on third down. Uh, it's third and three. Oh. We've seen this last... We saw this uh, last year, too, because Fournette wasn't in on third down very much last year. And as you can see, he's in on third down here, so that's really nice. What in the world? That opens the line what? just up. He just lined up as a wide receiver. Oh, yeah, I saw that. You're a little bit funny, so if you catch up. Let me know when you're at 134. Uh, 134? Yeah. Sounds good. It's a weird... Okay, I'll, all right, I'm at 134 now. Cool. Play action. Yep. So actually, let me ask you about that. Do you think that him being a run threat opens up play action passes to some extent? Oh, I just see what again. You know, I think so because once players realize how good he is as a runner, and once they start keying in on, oh no, he might run, especially if it's first and ten like this. In first and ten, you're generally expecting a run. Um, he doesn't run, which allows this linebacker, I think I think that's Sean Dion Hamilton, to the bottom of your screen. It looks like he's going to try and key in on the run and try and get it. Yeah, it looks like he's – and then he realizes it's pass. Rashawn Evans looked like he dropped back there, but, yeah. I think it will pose a threat to some teams. More so basic should... defenses. Yeah, so you just met, mentioned him at wide receiver, uh, lined up at receiver, and here he is doing it again. I don't know yep. exactly where we were at. Yeah, I see it. Let's check out what he can do. I saw Rashad Penny doing this quite a bit when I was watching him on tape. Oh, wow. Decent route. Got picked by Harrison, though. Now, that's something interesting to think about, and if you want to pause and go back here, Chris. Mm -hmm. um, the, the pick by Ronnie Harrison? Yeah. It was a decent route, but Harrison got ahead of it, um, and it was a battle for a while there. Do you think Geis possesses the upper body strength and arm strength to be able to um, get that ball out of a safety's hand like that? Probably not. 
But, I mean, I yeah. didn't really expect him to either. I mean, he's kind of a True. Back. And that wasn't a great throw by Etling either. Etling, that's how you, yeah. Uh, so, Agreed. Yeah, I mean, to me, that's not really a concern. And okay. Maybe it could, maybe it's because I'm a Lions fan, so we already have Theo Riddick for receiving situations anyway. Oh, uh, yes. But, yeah, I mean, generally, I want, if I'm thrown to my running back, I want him to be open. Or at least to, like, be able to be light open. Yeah. And in that particular case, like, I mean, you're throwing that ball. You, as a quarterback, you have to know that Harrison's right there, and you have to throw that to the outside shoulder, not the inside. And it was also a very decent route from uh, Geis, in my mind. He had a very sharp cut there on the out route. I like that. Interesting. Seems to fall forward well. Yeah. Where are you at, Chris? I'm at 244. Oh, gosh. I'm at 210. <laughs> oh, I'll wait for you. <laughs> um, yeah, I went back to that interception like four times. Yeah. Oof. Okay. Yeah. That's because I was shot there, though. Yeah. 225 now. Is Shove picking up 49 and pass pro? Doesn't mm -hmm. seem to be a big weakness of his. Nope. Not like it, what it is or has been for Saquon in the past. Yep. Is Shove powering through? Alright, you can play now. Play action, he picks up that pa um, that pass, bro. That's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, it's like I hit it on that. He needs to come down with that. Yeah. Like, there, Atling probably should have thrown it to Geiss. Yeah. And not that late. That's why he's not the greatest NFL prospect. Again, a little bit of shiftiness on the line. You're seeing him kind of um, stay put, trying to move east to west. Um, we mentioned that before, and we're not a huge fan of it. Mm -hmm. A little bit better there. I would have liked yeah. to see him attack things. Yeah. There. yeah. yeah. More space. That wasn't, a, eh, wasn't a great block. How much should, let's be honest though, how much should we really going to use Darius Geist as a run blocker? True. <laughs> he's he's like, a special run, he's not a run blocker. Yeah. I mean, like, maybe it's not a good look for him, like, cut blocking and pass pro, but a little bit different. And honestly, I kind of feel like that may be a little bit of the Fournette stuff, because Fournette was able to make those big blocks because he was that big of a running back. Guys, I don't know if he's able to do that um, that consistently and that great. So I bet they'll probably put that to a rest in the NFL, but either way. That was a decent play. Oh, man. It's back to back plays where he's carried someone. Yeah. <clears throat> it's crazy. Third and one is just powering right forward. Yep. Mm, missed that block. Oof. Yeah. Issues. So, how much does pass blocking impact a running back stock to you? I mean, is that the difference between. A top 10 overall prospect and a top 25 guy, or is that the difference between a first rounder and a second rounder? I mean, how much value do you put in, in something like that? You, you know, pass blocking is important for me as a running back because you need to keep protect your quarterback. As much as you may be the greatest running back in the league right now, you still need to be able to be a good pass blocker. And we've seen Zeke do pretty good pass blocks with Dallas. That makes that would. That's what makes him such a great running back, right? Um, 
I think Geis definitely has the ability to be a good pass blocker, um, which is definitely good for the NFL. So I think I'd value it. Not, it, I don't think it makes a difference between a top 10 and a top 25 pick, but for sure maybe a top 10 and maybe a top 15 pick. Um, over or a first or a second rounder and a third rounder, I think. But in the first round, like the running back's first priority is to be able to find that hole and get through it with speed, acceleration, and be able to score touchdowns, right? Um, this is the second priority, which I don't think it makes the difference between a top 10 pick and a top 25 pick. Yeah. There you go. Oh, it's weird. Mm-hmm. Which one are you at? 5.30? Yeah, 5.33. Nice. Oh, you're right on time with me. Perfect. Yep. So, normally we bring this up the other way. Uh, but we actually haven't seen guys throwing out a shotgun yet. So, we know that there's issues with her- oh, there's Wildcat. There's so, Wildcat. Oh, my. <laughs> uh, I was about to say, do you have any issues with him running out of shotgun? No, but... Because it seems like you know, a large majority of his runs are out of ace sex. Yeah. And you know... That's only one play, and that's also a wildcat. So we don't know if that's the most consistent that he can be because that's only one play. I really want to see two or three plays to tell. So I feel like if he can't run out of the shotgun, which what most running backs in the league do, I mean, we saw a couple years back with uh, Denver in the pistol formation. Um, we saw C.J. Anderson and the other running backs, Ronnie Hillman and stuff, all run out of shotgun pretty much. And here's another play where we're watching shotgun. So forget everything. Er, so keep in mind what I said that like it may not be the biggest deal if you can do it pretty consistently, like we're seeing. This is second play now. Huh. Okay, kind of got in. Mm -hmm. Quarterback had plenty of time there. He just stayed as well. Yep. And who was that? I think that was. Deron Payne or uh, Deshaun Hand? Probably. Yeah. That time was pain. Yep. Oh my god, you had like five seconds to get rid of that, man. Yeah, it's honestly on the quarterback. Ooh, that was Ooh. a pretty good plan. Payne. Yeah, you really took out the rock, man. Like that. That's when you throw to your running back. Like we talked earlier about the Harrison pick. Yeah. You don't throw contested balls to your running back. You throw them on angles or pitches or outs or swings. Mm hmm. And that was a perfect situation to throw to the running back. Again, zone blocking, right? He is going to pick up whoever in his zone, and at that point, there wasn't really anybody in his zone, but. Still wasn't bad. They put put a new quarterback in. Looks like it, yeah. Yeah, fifteen. They're down twenty four ten, so. Have you noticed any particular moves from him yet? Like, I, obviously, I'm not talking like pass rushing moves or anything, but yeah. Have you seen like a spin move? Have you seen him shoot someone out yet? Have you seen? Tell him to think of it. Ones? I haven't. I mean, I've just seen him going in right into the uh, defender, just trying to truck him, basically. Um, that may be a little bit of problem, a little bit less finesse and, pol finesse and polish on those in that type of situation. And especially for a ring back who's not exactly like a trucking type of back from a frame standpoint. Mm -hmm. Like someone who tries to rely more on their elusiveness, maybe not having a move like that. Yeah, I think it may hurt him in the end. Because, if you think about it, Geis isn't that big of a runner. He's 215, but, like, he's not the big power back, like the Bo Scarborough or the Saquon Barkley type of size. He doesn't possess that kind of size. So, it may be a little bit tough with him with uh, increased NFL defense, defensive levels he has to face in his career. 
And I think that that might be one of the things that I don't like about him. Like I mentioned, maybe it was on uh, our, our pre-show, so I'll bring it up again. Uh, but for me, Geist is not really up there with a Michelle or a Rojo to me, or Ronald Jones. Uh, and I think that one of the reasons why might be because of his lack of rushing moves. Like, I, yeah. I don't really see a spin move there, I don't really see a juke move there. And that's one of the few things I like about Saquon, is that I mean, you see him chronal guys, you see him uh, mm -hmm. spin guys out. And he's known for that yeah. insane jump cut. Whereas we haven't really seen anything like that from guys. It's more to try to run around you with your feet more so than avoid mm -hmm. you. And I did a film session on uh, Saquon Barkley a little bit earlier on, and I think during the summer. Um, there was this one play where he was able to just to juke out two people. He juked out one guy and then kept running and juked out the other guy and was able to shed the tackle. Um, I remember just raving about that play. And just speak for Saquon's athleticism over Darius's in my mind. Saquon's much more athletic in Darius because he can hurdle these guys and he can put some spin moves on them and put them on the, uh, ice, you know. For sure, for sure. All right. So, uh, I'm assuming you've gone through the Bielma game so far, right? Yeah, I'm finished with that. Yes, yeah, so any thoughts on that? Uh, just a uh, quick thoughts, maybe some ratings he did well and poorly in that game. Again, power, right? He's going to be able to use his legs. His legs is incredible. Very underrated or underestimated lower half, half in my opinion. Um, just crazy amount of power from there. Uh, the blocking, I was a huge fan of. We saw a lot more blocking in this game. That was really nice. And the receiving, too. From the receiving end, I liked how he was able to get some receptions and be able to run a little bit with those footballs in his hand. So Nice. So, yeah, I'm assuming that you are of the mindset that he is a free down back, at least so far. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Uh, so, finally, uh, we have the Notre Dame tape up, which is, for those of you guys who can see my screen, the Sixers Bowl. Yep. Uh, and yeah, Nick, whenever you have that up, let me know. I also have this one on 0.75 too. Okay, yeah, I'll turn it to 0.75 and then we can get into it. Alright, I'm ready. Awesome. Play. A little bit of nice shiftiness right there, being able to see that there was not going to be a lot of plays coming out of that and being able to move to his where he could. Could be able to make a play. Holy crap. That pass block though? I mean, yeah. you know what? I'm gonna rewind that. If you wanna keep going so that you're a little ahead of me or at least pause it and go ahead. Yeah, I'd like to re I'll rewatch that too because I wasn't really paying Wow. Wow, that was crazy. He just completely moved Pancake. that guy. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> wow. Leg strength, man. That was coming off in the legs. Yeah, nice throw. So, I don't think there's any particular issues after that with his pass blocking. No, for sure not. Nice stiff arm. Nice two stiff arms. Damn. He's going to be able to get... He's moving forward again. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> this table alone is kind of changing my mind on guys, not going to lie. I like him yep. a lot more already from what we've seen in this first half a minute here. Dude, that was crazy on 21. He just threw him to the ground. Oh my god. And then at 45 seconds this, she just completely chucks through the guy. Yep. Oh man, that's a defensive tackle at 50 seconds. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. <clears throat> Strength, man. He's just going to keep going. He doesn't stop. I mean, I want to go back block there. Yeah, I'd like to go back to probably round fifty-two. I just want to see how many Notre Dame players were around Geis at the time when he got tackled. One, two, three, four, five Notre Dame players. It takes for to take Darius Geis down. That's incredible. You don't see that a lot with running backs. Yeah, that's kind of insane. <laughs> Next play here, though, on the play action, he does kind of miss number five. Yeah. But it's not like he doesn't, I mean, this is correctable type of stuff, though. Mm-hmm. Get him with a good running back coaching. He'll probably be one of the top runners in very soon here. 
There's still a kind of swing yard of that tackle at the end, uh, about 110. Yeah. Look at um the next play, the pass block at about 111. Yeah, about 111. It wasn't a pretty block, but it was an effective block, right? Yeah, you took him out on the, on the little chip there. Mm-hmm. That was nice. I like that. Mm, slipped up a little bit there. He hasn't had any issues with balance so far, though, so that's supposed no. to be a fluke play. And I remember hearing something that's saying, I feel like it was raining in this game. I don't know if it oh, was raining in this yeah, game. But, so that may be a problem just based on the field being slippery. That was a nice block. A little bit of yeah. patience right there. Not exactly nah. the best. Uh, Doesn't get him much. Field, field turf. Again, being able to push his way forward at uh, 140, probably around 145. That was crazy. Yeah, it just takes a lot of people to bring him down, though. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, how many guys have actually tackled him one on one? I don't think I've seen a single player tackle him one on one in this in, this, in, uh, in these last three games that we've watched. Yeah, there he is in the receiving end. Will be a touchdown. Oh, okay, nice. And again, that was another situation where you want to throw to your running back. Yep, good, good design. Oh, okay. Maybe a little guy missed there. Not the biggest shoot move. I'm at 224, 5, whatever. Yeah, same thing. Gets to the outside. See, he's an effective runner outside. You don't see him go outside a lot, but when he does, he's effective, which is nice. Oh, I like how he cut that back in. Man. Mm. Oh my goodness. Mm. Look at that. Holy crap, man. Dang. He had a little bit of help from 63, but I mean, that's still Not like, much. largely on him. Yeah. Cut out that guy. Again. just carries Fortini. Yep. I liked how you... Russell. I like, again, I liked how you were... Uh, you said he cut back inside. I like that. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, it's a crazy I play. he got in there. Oh, I think so, too. Maybe. He ah, didn't. Blown up. Oh, he's gonna get stopped. Again, the patience part, right? He was sitting there for way too long. Mm -hmm. Now, Green, behind a good O-line, like, if he if he were Dallas's running back, for instance, obviously they're not gonna take him, but just an example. Like, when you have yeah. guys that you can rely on in front of you, that might be a little bit more reliable. But, yeah. Here, um, before we end this, I'd like to go to around 325. Can we go there and take a look at oh, it real quick? Yeah, that's actually about where I was. Okay, good. I like how he dips his shoulder and he goes low. That's You, you saw that with Fournette when he completely killed that player against Old Miss last year. Um, clearly, it's in here with guys. I'm a huge fan of how he dipped the shoulder, being able to take a hit and keep going, right? Mm -hmm. mm. Just runs forward. Not afraid yep. to hit that inside gap at all. Counter play. Jesus. Yep. That's like four extra yards. Dang. With a good prob it looks like all eleven gold helmets are around that uh ball right there. That's nice. Shovel pass? Wow. 
I'm not the biggest fan of using him on a shovel. That's not my style, personally. I think it, you probably would have been a little bit better off if you just handed it off to him. Yeah, but still, the strength that he had and being able to get into the end zone right there, that was really nice. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I'm actually going to start a little bit here. Uh, first off, for me, that was easily the most impressive save I've seen of him. I don't know about you. Yeah. Uh, but that was <laughs> very, very, very good. Uh, not going to lie, that really changed my personal opinion on him to a very large extent. Uh, what about you? I mean, did that really Im improve him to you, or, or not really? And I've been a fan of Geis for most of his time when I, I well, first off when I looked at him, I remember thinking that he wasn't very that, wasn't that special. Then I watched Mark Lombardi's film session on him, changed my opinion after I took a relook myself. Um, he kind of fell off. I don't think he's been mentioned a lot this year because of Saquon and Bryce Love emerging as like the top college football backs. But he's definitely probably one of, or maybe even in my mind, the best running back in this school class. Yeah, and from after watching the Notre Dame game, I kind of see where the hype is coming from now. Like, yeah. the way that the dude just, like, I mean, I didn't really see, there was, like, a, a couple of flashes in those other two games, in the Auburn and Alabama games, where he would, like, occasionally here and there pick up, like, one or two extra yards or whatnot. Um, but, like, his ability to actually, like, run through tackles uh, and carry guys and... and really just he showed that lower body explosion yeah a lot more in the Notre Dame game yep um he I, if it's rain if he performs his best in the rain he better go to Seattle because that would be crazy oh my god see you him know what? do that every single you know what Seattle does kind of need a running back oh yeah I mean, that I, would... I'm a fan of processing rolls, don't get you wrong, but... Mm -hmm. I mean, can you imagine Darius Geist falling in Marshall and Lynch's... Shadow? Yeah. That'd be insane. Oh, man, because I mean, last time, when they had a good running back like Marshall, they were a legit Super Bowl contender. Yep. I think they've kind of lost that because they're a of all their defense is broken down, and secondly, they did lose Marshawn. So, mm -hmm. talking about ideal fits, I think that would be one of his ideal fits. Nice. So yeah, actually, let's just keep going on that. Is there any other place you'd like to see him? Um, I know Adam Gase doesn't love big play runners, but I'd love to see him in Miami, man. That'd be so cool to see him being running around in uh, Aqua, an orange. And I'm not a Dolphins fan, just to let you know. But I think. Another rainy climate, and we're not. Uh, and obviously, I should be forming my opinions off of he can perform well in the rain, but he can perform well in the rain clearly. So, um, <laughs> it rains occasionally in Miami, so that might not be a bad uh, fit for uh, guys. Interesting. Where do you uh, think he would fit best? Yeah, I mean, I really like those two options. Uh, Ashley, just to help me out at least a little bit here, I'm going to bring up the draft order. Mm -hmm. uh, real quick. Oops. Did I not? Oops. Wow. Uh, but yeah, I really like his uh, his I guess ability to perform in big games too. I will say that. Like, yeah, we watched three pretty, I would say, pretty good defenses. I mean, they're not like Michigan and Clemson, or mm -hmm. I mean, or Georgia, uh, but I mean, Alabama is still in that group for sure. Yep. They're still very clear top five defense, and Auburn is not that far behind. Yeah, I wouldn't put Notre Dame in like that top five to ten range, but I mean, even then, they're still a top ten college football team. Yeah. Clearly. Without a quarterback, too. Yeah. Uh, uh, here we go. I'll take a look. Okay. So, performing in big games, clutch factor doesn't seem to be an issue there either. Mm -hmm. um, maybe Baltimore could work? Baltimore would be Alex, bad. Alex Collins there, but. 
Uh, that could be an interesting spot for him. Yeah. Uh, Washington, maybe? If they don't adjust defense in the first, I suppose, to work. Uh, it might seem a little interesting uh, at 50-50 at at level, but maybe Cincinnati? Mm hmm. I mean, they already have Joe Mixon, so it may be a stretch, but I, I don't think he'd be a bad fit there. They were 31st in rushing. I mean, obviously, a lot of that is probably on the offensive line. Same with Detroit. I can see him here. Yeah. Though a lot of our issues were also offensive line related last year. Uh, so. Yeah. And if he does slip into the playoffs, I mean, you never know what can happen with Buffalo and with Sean McCoy. Yeah. Apparently Carolina, I've been talking with the Panthers fans, they think that maybe running back is an option. Uh, to replace Sark and Stewart in that true running back role. Yeah. Uh, Tennessee wants to keep a 50-50 split and they lose to Marco Murray. Atlanta's been talking about shooting Tim Coleman or Devontae Freeman. Maybe they want a second running back. Uh, New Orleans is losing uh, Mark Ingram possibly next year. So maybe they want a long-term option, and of course they have a history of three running back sets. Uh, Pittsburgh could be losing Le'Veon Bell in free agency, so maybe that's an option. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's all kinds of... and gosh, they're making calls to New England. I mean... <laughs> I know they have James White, but they might be losing Deion Lewis. Uh, so... That would be a nightmare for me. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, there's, there's plenty of decent decent options to go around in the first. Mm -hmm. I don't so, think he goes top 10, personally. No. I don't know about you. I don't know. He may be a top 10, but probably won't be based on the hype he's getting right now because in the end, oh. it's a, lo a lot of it is about media. Like People just love to carry on about the media, and if they're not going to hype him up, then I don't think he'll be worthy of a top 10 pick. Maybe, like even maybe Stan Fran. Possibly. I mean, if they get rid of uh, Carlos Hyde, mm -hmm. it's a lot in the bay like too. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I also want to ask you a question, Chris. Yeah, for sure. uh, before before this, you said um that you didn't want him on the Lions. Are you kind of changing your mind a little bit? But, yeah, after seeing the Notre Dame game, I still think Green. I, that defense is a bigger issue, for especially. And I didn't think a lot of our issues were offensive line related. Uh, but yeah. after, after seeing these three games and, and going through and watching a little bit more and breaking it down with you, uh, he does seem like he might be that BPA option. I mean, maybe yeah. you think, like, if we can get this guy in round one and now we can adjust defense, like, basically the whole rest of the way. Uh, get like those linebackers in the second and third round, maybe defensive end steal and like free agency, something along those lines. Uh, it, mm -hmm. I could definitely see it working. Yep. And especially with a new blocking scheme. Uh, I'm yeah, not going to say we're going to be Jacksonville because our defense is nowhere near that. Uh, but I mean, I could see us turning into like maybe a um, LA Rams type of team. Yeah. Like Matthew Stafford, Jared Goff type, maybe uh, guys becomes our version of a girly. Have a competent enough defense, like Jared Davis could be our like our, our big guy in the middle there and work around him, build around him. Uh, maybe yeah. like a Carolina uh, type of team. Uh, yeah. And, and, like one of those teams that can go in and, and get a playoff spot. Maybe win, yep. maybe win the division. Nice. I think you guys have a decent chance of winning the division. Um, I think Aaron Rodgers will progressively decrease as time or er, de degress. Yeah, I think that's the word. As time moves on, I don't think Minnesota has a stable quarterback situation to go back to the Super Bowl or go back to the playoffs. And obviously, the Bears aren't even a question. But yeah. Now, of course, we're in Chicago. New coach. I do like Matt Nagy, uh, mm -hmm. and they always have a run game. They're always here to play in the Soldier Field. We saw that this year. They almost upset the Falcons there. I believe they did upset like some really good team there. Steelers. Yeah, the Steelers. Uh, so they're always a threat uh, for sure. But yeah, I don't think that they're 
I think part of the Bears' issues is that Aaron Rodgers, Matthew Stafford, and Minnesota's defense are in their same division. Yep. I mean, everyone always talks about, oh, look at the three NFC South teams making the playoffs. The Saints, the Drew Brees, and Matt Ryan, and Cam Newton, and, and Jameis Winston, and all that. But, like, you take a look at some of these other divisions. Like, I know you're a Broncos fan, so we'll even bring up the AFC West here. Like, we have yep. the Chiefs. I mean, they have explosive playmakers. Tyreek Hill. There's, they do. There's um, the Chargers. They were second in points allowed. They were the only team in the top five in points allowed to not make the conference championship, let alone the playoffs. Uh, and then you have Oakland, who's getting John Gruden. And they have yep. Derek Carr and Marshawn Lynch and, and pretty decent playmakers on defense. Uh, so, yeah. honestly, we're at the point now where I feel like the only poor division in the league, outside of the AFC East, because the Patriots run that, we all know that, is probably the AFC North. Yeah. I don't really care much for what Cincy's doing, though they are getting to real Austin. Cleveland, I mean, maybe they they get better with the quarterback, but, I mean, I thought Kaiser would be enough for them to win, like, five games. Uh, yeah. And then, but Pittsburgh could be losing Le'Veon this year. They could be losing Big Bang as early as next year. Uh, I mean, Antonio Brown isn't exactly known for being the healthiest receiver out there. As good as he is. Uh, their defense mm-hmm. losing Ryan Shazier for who knows how long. Uh, I don't really know how long they'll be able to be a force in the AFC anymore either. Uh, yeah. But that yeah, big three slowly pushing away. Yeah, for sure. So, this is definitely uh, a great time to be a fan of football. I would say. It is. What about you? Um, yeah, I agree. As much as people are saying that football is a dying sport, I think once we get more playmakers, like, dare I say, Baker Mayfield and more bigger personalities, um, that, like, for example, other sports leagues like the NBA has. I mean, you have Curry, you have LeBron, you have all those guys. And this is not the NBA prospect central. But um, <laughs> I, think, I think as we – get more big personalities like Baker and more big players like Darius Geis and Saquon Barkley and Leonard Fournette and on and on and on. I think this league will start kind of put, putting the pieces back together, if you will. So, actually, since you brought that up, uh, who do you think might be the next guy? Obviously, now for the short term, we have like the Tom Brady's and the, the Browns and the Bells and all that. But do mm-hmm. you have a guy in, in mind that you would maybe like to see take that next step to, to be that face of the NFL? You know, I, I'm a huge fan of Deshaun Watson. Um, the thing, the, the things that he did in Cl- uh, Cleveland, excuse me, Houston, um, for the short time after we all, after I was not a big believer in any of the quarterbacks in that class, I would love to see him kind of be that face of the NFL. Also, Carson Wentz, um, Baker Mayfield. I'm a huge. I'm a, if you guys don't know already, I'm a huge Baker Mayfield fan, including you, Chris. If you don't know that already, yeah, but I, um, so yeah. What do you think about maybe Ezekiel Elliott or maybe Russell Wilson? Mm, I think Wilson's kind of slowly falling out of his prime, um, especially with that terrible Seahawks team. I'm sorry, but it is pretty. It is on the downward spiral here um, as we speak in 2018. But um, I think Zeke could definitely be a figure in the NFL. But I think it'll probably be state of quarterbacks as it's more of a passing central league. I mean, you see these guys like Aaron Rodgers, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, et cetera. They're all quarterbacks. Um, obviously, I think we'll, I think Zeke, Fournette, and Gurley will probably go down as some of the greatest running backs of our time. Um, they'll be on like Walter Payton and Emmett Smith kind of type of level, maybe even Barkley if we add the him to our, that list. But I think Zeke could definitely be a uh, foresee in the foreseeable future a huge face in the NFL. Nice. Uh, so, anything else uh, going back to guys here that you would like to bring up? Any maybe final thoughts, summary, what we saw from all of the games combined, uh, type of thing? Yeah. Um, nice. I'm a huge fan of him after watching this tape. He's an incredible playmaker. Um, for those who are saying carry on Johnson, who Auburn running back is better than him, that's probably complete and utter bullcrap. Um, I might even put him above Saquon Barkley if I'm not impressed by Saquon's tape when I watch him probably this weekend. 
But um, overall, I'm a huge fan of Geis, his power as a running back. He has pretty good he – doesn't, he doesn't have great speed, but he has decent speed. I think he'll have the speed to be able to hold up in the NFL quite well. Um, the only thing I really saw that was concerning – was the part where he just kind of sit the line and kind of wait and sift through that. If he gets into a habit of doing that, he's not going to be a great play. He's not going to be making pop plays every now and then What of what we've seen in college. So, something to keep in mind. Yeah. Uh, uh, anything else in, in particular? Or is that basically all you have? I think that's all I have. Awesome. Uh, so you want to plug your stuff? I know that you're on uh, YouTube. You want to direct people there? Yep. So for I have a website. It's called gdaofficial.com. I post my mock drafts, my position rankings, my prospect rankings on there. And occasionally I'll put out some scouting reports. Baker Mayfield scouting report, I believe, comes out next week. But um, otherwise, I also have a YouTube channel. It's called Nick Gashler. Just search up Nick Gashler and you'll be able to find it on the YouTube search bar. Um, I make film sessions. We're going to come out with a Marcus Davenport film session, hopefully later today thursday um so i'm excited to release that so that's honestly about it in terms of my stuff so make sure to check those out and uh, subscribe if you haven't already awesome uh so yeah thank you guys all again for joining us and watching some darius guys i hope you guys saw some things learned a thing or two uh maybe that you didn't see before like i did um uh, don't forget to check out our Instagram, Prospect Central 101, Twitter, Prospect Central, and uh, our Facebook page as well. And hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Uh, so for now, peace out, and we'll see you guys again soon.